Currently in the stores is this little Chinese tier 8 heavy, the WZ111. It's a premium tank, but should you be looking at it? There, hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to look at this tank, the Chinese tier 8 heavy tank. It's a premium tank and it's the WZ111. Now those sharp-eyed ones amongst you will think, hmm, this looks a little bit similar to some other tier 8s like the IS-3, the IS-5, the IS-6 and possibly even the Glacial. So should you be looking at getting this tank? Well, let's have a look what it's in the store for first before we move on to whether you should drop your hard-earned cash. So this tank is currently in the store in two parts, both of which are for gold. For 10,500 gold, you can get this tank along with the WZ11-2, which is a great tank. Or for a mere 5,500 gold, you can get this tank as a standalone with all the equipment and everything unlocked, which isn't actually that bad of a bargain when you think about it. So anyway, sticking it into cat tank compare, I'm looking at it here against the 112 Glacial, the IS-3 and the IS-5. And as you can see, it's pretty much a copy paste of the Glacial. In fact, there's not much difference apart from the gun depression and the gun elevation. This one has less depression and more elevation. Aside from that, it's pretty much the same tank, but win rate rise, it's not performing as well. But we'll get into that in a while. As you can see, I mean, the damage is pretty decent. The rate of fire is a bit low. The penetration is really good. The armor is not too bad, but again, we'll get into that. Survivability, well, it's got about 1900 hit points. It's got pretty decent turret armor, but it's the hull that really lets it down. DPM, as I said, it's, it's pretty much the same as the Glacial, and it's got pretty decent average damage. One thing that does let it down, five degrees of gun depression. I mean, that's not great, to be honest with you, but it does have 23 degrees of elevation. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. I mean, I'm not a big fan of this tank, to be fair. I mean, it's one of my worst performing tier eights. But is it because I, it's the tank or is it because of me? I mean, until recently, I didn't know how to play this thing. And I'm not a big fan of the Glacial either preferring the IS-3 and the IS-5. And that says a lot because I'm not a big fan of the IS-5 either. But the thing is, I rolled out in this tank. I didn't know it was gonna go and hit the stores, to be perfectly frank with you. But I rolled out in this tank to see if I could, in fact, work out how to play the darn thing. And you know what? It is a tricky tank to get to grips with. But the thing is, once you start getting used to it, it's actually not as bad as you initially think. It's not as good as some of the other tier 8 heavies, and I'm thinking along the lines IS-3, etc, etc. But it's a half decent tank. One of the things that does let it down though is its armour. I mean, this is the render of it. You can see it's pretty similar to the Glacial IS type of tanks, and you would think it's pretty, pretty meaty. That's what it looks like the armor profile wise. You can see the turret, especially the front turret is pretty heavily armored. And that upper glacius plate seems quite nice. But then I stick it against an IS-3. And whilst the IS-3 is gonna to struggle to pen that, that turret, it's not gonna to struggle to pen the front plate. And this belies the problem with this tank. It looks mean, it looks tough, and actually it's not. It's quite an easy tank to pen. So this is not a tank that you really should be sticking on the front line. Not only that, it has a 12 and a half second reload. True, it is dishing out some pretty decent damage, but if you stick this in a front line and try to brawl with it, unless you get up close and personal and use that turret armor, you're gonna struggle. This is more of a second line support tank. It's not the bully you think it should be, but, it's no shrinking violet either. It is a nice tank. I used to hate it. Seriously, I, I really didn't like this tank. But as I said, I, I went back and I thought, well, is it me or is it the tank? And you know what? 
like nine times out of ten, it ain't the tank. It's me, and it's the way I play it. I don't understand the tank. So I went away, and I rethought it, and I re-looked at it, and I approached the tank differently. I didn't put it on the front line as such until it was absolutely necessary. I tried to keep it more hauled down, and I tried to just pick off the targets using that derp gun, because it is quite a nice gun, let's be honest with you. And if you rush in with this tank, like you rush in with a lot of tanks, you just don't have the armor to protect you on the front. So you've got to be constantly looking for where to play this tank and where to position it. And if you get the positioning right and you get the timing right, it's a beautiful tank to play, oddly enough. It, it's one of the better Chinese tanks, in my opinion. However, I still keep coming back to the tank itself is not as bad as I initially thought and a lot of people think it's the way we play it. Okay, when we get a heavy, we like to be a bully. We like to go around and, you know, flex. And you really can't do that in this thing, unlike you can do it in, the, say, WZ-112 or even the IS-3. This tank just won't let you do that. It is easy to pen, as you've seen from the armor profile. And as you can see here, I mean, I've lost a lot of hit points. That IS-5 has just been picking at me. But I've also dished out a fair amount of damage. And for a Chinese tank, the gun is relatively accurate. So I've dished out, what, just over 2,600 on damage here, about 740. Uh, I've only taken one kill. I'm not being purposely on the front line. I've just been hanging back a bit. I'm not setting the world on fire. Never said I was going to. But I'm having a good time in the tank. I lost a lot of hit points, but I pushed when I needed to push. I gave the opposition's heavies and TDs a bit of a hard time, and that, to me, is what makes the game more successful. Unfortunately, the mobility of this thing isn't the best, so there's no way I was going to get over there, and that, so it was just a let in hang back. I get a second class from my troubles and some pretty decent credits, and that's the thing. I mean, this tank is actually not a bad credit maker at all, so I'm quite happy with that game. Now, this is the last game, I'm rolling out on Faust, and again, I'm trying to think, well, where are they going to be? And I'm thinking that, well, there's no caps, it's not supremacy, so I'm expecting some tanks here, and they don't disappoint. There's the Tiger 1, and there's the M6 Experimental. Get a great shot into the Tiger 1, and then the M6 gets a fantastic shot into me, hitting that bottom plate, which is wide, wide open. So I'm like, hmm, rethink this a little bit, reload, try and reset the camo, I pop out and I see a T-49, there he is. And this is a great shot by the T-49, by the way. Straight into my turret capola. I mean, that's just a fantastic shot. So I'm gonna have to rethink my entire strategy here because there's no way I'm gonna push on the uh, M6 and there's no way I'm gonna keep poking my nose out to let the T-49 bleed me. So I'm just sat here thinking, well, where are they? And I can see on the mini-map that maybe, just maybe, they may be on the other side in our spawn, and there they are. So I'm going to come out of here, forget the M6, forget the T49 for the moment, and I'm going to show you how good this gun can be, which is surprising for a Chinese heavy. There's the P43. He's. I, I'm hoping he's going to pop. I'm going to try and stay in cover. Is he going to pop? Yes, he is. Wow, what a shot. You can't do that in an IS-2, trust me. This is not a bad tank. It's not a bad Chinese tank. And for the credits that you're going to earn off it, 5,500 gold for all this tier 8 heavy isn't a bad deal either. Not, well, I don't think it is. Okay, it's not the easiest tank to play. And a lot of you will find it's not the funnest tier 8 to play. It's a tricky tank, technically. You need a little bit of noggin to play it. Well, at least I do. I mean, I've had to re-evaluate how I play this tank in order to get better success in it. But that's the idea of the game, isn't it? I don't know how that bounced off the Emil 1951. Side on, APCR, with the penetration this thing's got, that should have gone straight through it, but it didn't. And this is the thing about this tank. I mean, you can see the reload, it's pretty long, but you're dishing out, you know, 400 alpha. 
it's not a bad tank guys seriously and if i didn't have it i would be tempted with this one because you can have fun in it 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 isn't the same as the is3 it is however a similar playstyle to the glacial but it comes with obviously interchangeable camo on like that tank i said earlier that every man in his dog can pen you frontally unless you get up close and personal i'm going to show you that now on the g2 spg he's hitting me left right and center on that front plate and he's penning me very very easily i'm also penning him easily because the penetration on this thing's not too bad again he pens me but as long as i can get up close and personal to him he's no longer going to be able to pen me and there you go i switch to he there we have it and we finish him off 2400 odd damage only 310 bounced two kills again another second class and again i am very very happy about that game so that has been my video on the wz111 currently in the store i've been fujit for 5,500 gold at a standalone tank with all, everything on lot, I think this one's worth a look. By all means, share your comments below. Um, if you've got any decent replays, guys, wing them across to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. I'd like to do a big shout out to both my Patreons and my YouTube members. Patreons are currently listed on the screen. Without their financial support, videos like this would be a lot harder. YouTube members are now listed on the screen and without their financial support, it would be a lot harder too. I'd also like to say a big, big thank you to all my subscribers because without you, these videos would be absolutely meaningless. So until the next time, guys, I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because, you know, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.